All right. Hey, good morning, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is still Monday, October 7th, 2024. This is the part two of your morning update on Hurricane Milton. Video one talked all about the storm, the track, the intensity, trajectory, things like that. We're talking about forecast track and how the storm is going to behave. Uh, this video is going to be all impacts. We're going to talk about broad scale impacts, what is coming for the state of Florida writ large, and then we're going to try to focus in on some zones such as Northeast Florida. I'm going to do my best to talk as much as I can about the area, but again, I'm going to have to generate generalize things to save time because if I went through everyone's zip code I would be here for hours so we'll try to do Facebook live videos to give you guys a better chance to answer ask your questions uh, probably starting by tomorrow but uh, this is going to be the best I've got right now but know that everything I'm about to tell you is a bit subject to the final forecast of Milton which is very difficult we are talking about a very compact Category 5 hurricane again today that is moving to the north and eventually to the northeast and will come in somewhere near Tampa and cross Florida, but wide-reaching impacts will be felt to the north and to the south of Milton, and we have a kind of a dual dance of how exactly the trajectory looks. Is it more like this? Is it more like this? Is it more like this? And we also have the factor of the storm getting much stronger, faster than we thought, and then hoping it's going to weaken, but uh, how much it weakens and to what degree and what the storm looks like as it comes in are all big factors here. So things are probably going to change. So take this with a grain of salt as we get through this. So quick look at the forecast cone going over the watches and warnings that affect hurricane watches in effect from about that Fort Myers region up to about Cedar Key, including all of Tampa, Lake Okeechobee, and all these pinks sitting well inland means that most of central Florida is under a hurricane watch here this morning, meaning hurricane conditions are possible within the next two to three days. Tropical storm watches are up for much of the big bend of Florida and for the southern part of Florida around the Florida Keys. These will all expand to the east along with the hurricane watches. So you can kind of just see how they're probably going to draw these out. Parts of Miami, maybe West Palm will be under a tropical storm watch later today. Jackson will be under tropical storm watch later today. And I would even imagine a few counties of Southeast Georgia make it under that tropical storm watch as well um, with the storms. So you can see the general pattern storm moves up away from the Yucatan, recurves somewhere around Tampa and moves in. So we got to talk about some impacts. Number one, first and foremost, is the west coast of Florida. We're talking about Tampa, points north, points south. The landfall consensus continues to focus right around or just north of Tampa Bay. And I stress that, again, that is the absolute worst case scenario, bringing the storm in just north of Tampa. As we go over to one of our wind models, which we'll come back to in a little bit, um, just showing you right here, if this storm were to make land fall right around that clear water area uh, just north of Tampa Bay, pushing this wind into Tampa Bay would cause a catastrophic storm surge. This is the first forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Eight to 12 feet of storm surge. Now in Helene, you guys were in the five to seven foot range. That's pretty much what you got. This is eight to 12. And again, I caution that the winds with Helene were only par partially into the bay, but the storm's motion was this way. So yeah, there was water rise and it was bad, but it wasn't the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is a storm coming in from the east or from the west rather, or more like Milton where it's gonna come in more from like the southwest because your bay opens to the southwest. So the water is being pushed straight into Tampa Bay. So where a lot of the flooding was more off to the coast here, uh, along the islands and whatnot on the outside of the bay, more flooding is gonna be felt on the inland parts of the bay than outer parts of the bay. And, and, and let me tell you guys, right now, this is the eight to 12 foot surge that the Hurricane Center put out thinking that Milton was going to be a bit of a weaker storm. Okay, Milton's already a Category 5 hurricane. It's probably going to damn near hit its threshold ceiling over the next 24 hours for intensity and then try to come down from there. Milton will be a weakening former major Category 5 hurricane. The potential for storm surge with that is tremendous, and I do not believe that this is going to be the final call for Tampa Bay. I told you that with Helene when we talked about the big bend. I said probably we're going to be pushing up towards 1520, and that's what we did. This will probably go 15 to 20 feet for the, storm, the Tampa Bay region, assuming this forecast track holds. I cannot stress enough that folks around Tampa Bay do not need to stay. This will be the worst hurricane on modern record in Tampa Bay. It will, there will be nothing to compare it to, not even going back to the 1800s, not even going back to the 1921 hurricane. No one alive in Tampa Bay remembers a storm anywhere near as bad as what this could very well bring you guys. I absolutely urge you, please, for the love of God, Follow your local officials, and if your county EOC says to evacuate, leave. If you have a family member that thinks they're going to stay around Tampa Bay because, oh, well, the other hurricane wasn't that bad, 
go forcibly drag them out. Okay, we just saw a tragedy on the national scale of people that, you know, said, hey, you know, we're not going to leave or we're not going to do this. And then the worst case happened. We just saw the worst case happen to people. Okay, and it's very possible that this could happen again. So don't be the person on the news on Friday or Saturday or Sunday being interviewed by the Weather Channel saying, well, I rode out the hurricane on my roof or clinging to a light pole because I didn't realize how bad the surge was going to be or they didn't tell me. If you're listening to this video, don't be one of those people. Okay, that's my spiel on that. The storm surge of Tampa Bay, and again, points north and points south. This is down towards Inglewood, Charlotte Harbor, 5 to 10 feet. This might be as worse you got with Ian, if not worse. Bonita Beach, even down further south, and even up to parts of where they got hit by Helene pretty hard, may get a couple feet of storm surge as well, but the worst will be around north and south of that Tampa Bay area, especially to the south wherever that eye makes landfall. Okay, That is my, that is my kind of thing on the storm surge threat for Tampa Bay. Otherwise, we're talking about hurricane force winds, um, hurricane force winds and heavy flooding rainfall. This is the latest from the National Hurricane Center for the WPC's outlook for rain. The Jacksonville area is coming up in terms of rainfall intensity. Um, this is going to be a corridor of rain to the north of where the storm makes landfall because we're going to have a cold front draped across parts of the southeast. And then Milton is likely going to interact with this cold front. I've been telling you all for a couple of days I thought the rainfall was going to come up for this. And it is. This is the GFS model showing another nine plus inches of rain coming from the Jacksonville area. And there's a lot of 10s and 12s and 13s. I think that a, a pretty strong onshore rain and wind event is coming for St. John's, Flagler, parts of Putnam counties maybe Southern Clay into Ocala. There's going to be an axis of really heavy rain with this as it comes by. Now, this drops off pretty quick as we go back to the west and as we go up into Georgia. But even into coastal Georgia, there is a good chance of heavy rainfall all in this area as Milton approaches and as Milton passes. And this will be over the next couple of days. So this will be a long-term potential flooding rainfall event as Milton moves through. Um, flooding rainfall again from the Weather Prediction Center. You can see anybody in red, good chance to see flooding rainfall. And even South Florida, you know, parts of South Florida and, um, you know, the Florida Keys maybe even in on some moderate flooding potential as Milton approaches. It's going to be a very tough situation. Now, one of the things a lot of people are talking about is wind. And the problem with the wind right now is we don't really have the final trajectory of Milton. We do believe that Milton is going to come up. Now, I'll tell you, for, for basically from about Cedar Key and Oak, Cala through probably about, you know, Cape Coral to Lake Okeechobee. This is the hurricane corridor. Anyone in central Florida, Melbourne, Orlando, Kissimmee, you know, parts, you know, south towards like down like Lake Wales area. I'm trying to think of all the cities in there. That's all hurricane potential right there. I mean, I'll, I'll just use um, this map to kind of show it here. Basically, your hurricane corridor is kind of something like this. Anyone in this area can see hurricane force winds. That's wind sustained 75 miles an hour, gusting at times higher. Um, the, the hurricane, the, the higher gust will likely be confined to here over 100 miles an hour, but generally that's what it's going to be. For Jacksonville, it's going to be a tough call, and I'm, I'm having a hard time. I almost don't want to make a wind call just yet, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the 850 millibar map from the Euro to kind of give you an idea. None of our regional cams are high-resolution solution models are handling this very well yet and most of them are a day outside of their range from what they can forecast so i don't have specifics yet but i can tell you this, this is the 50 millibar flow so the, my concern for winds for jacksonville is that one milton is probably going to be a little bit further north than we originally thought we thought this was going to come in south of tampa go south of melbourne well now it looks like tampa and maybe just north of the space coast okay this is going to put a lot of strong winds at a belt to the north of milton Again, because Milton is interacting with a strong high pressure system, you're going to have a stronger gradient of high to low in terms of pressure, which creates stronger winds. Um, so across Jacksonville, I'm thinking at this point, we're probably going to see something much more applicable to what we saw in Helene. And I think there's a some chance that the winds could be higher, especially near the coast and parts of maybe southern St. John's, Putnam, Flagler uh, type counties. I think there's a good a good chance that we could see something even stronger. Um, I think this is going to be much more of a coastal event in terms of um, the coast getting stronger winds because the winds will be coming from a different direction and they'll be kind of wedged in right here. Again, this like wedge of stronger winds is really something that I am um, concerned about as Milton moves through. So again, I, I'm not ready to fully, fully jump on the actual, you know, exact winds, 
But uh, here is from the National Weather Service, the kind of broad outlook for wind potential. You can see along the St. Johns River and along the coasts of, Flo of northern Florida, potential for wind gusts above 75 miles per hour. And then wind gusts definitely above 75 miles an hour for that central Florida, uh, Ocala, Gainesville, or south of Gainesville, you know, Orlando area. And then potential for wind gusts up to 70 miles an hour across parts of northern Florida, which is kind of applicable to what we got with Helene. And then across southeast Georgia, the wind potential goes down more like that low tropical storm force winds for like, you know, Brunswick and Valdosta and areas like that. Storm surge is something we have to talk about as well. Three to five feet is probably going to be the forecast for a lot of the St. John's River and along the Florida coast. This is such a long, pro prolonged duration onshore wind event that will last into Thursday that I think we're going to see higher storms flooding than we saw with Helene in terms of coastal flooding. And I think the St. John's River is going to flood worse than we saw with Helene. So if you didn't get anything from Helene, you might get something with Milton. And if you got it with Helene, you're going to get it worse with Milton. Flooding rainfall, we already talked about. Potential for over a foot of rain still to come on a very waterlogged part of the uh, coast already. Again, widespread potential flooding is very possible across northern Florida. The only good news is that the tornado threat will largely be confined south of you guys. So for Jacksonville and the greater Jacksonville area and even in the southeast Georgia, tornado is less likely. This is going to be more of a long, steady kind of punishing wind event than it's going to be like a peak where it just runs in and runs out kind of like Helene where it was like not so bad and then it got really hairy for a couple hours and it was gone um, looking at like the weather graphs here on the National Weather Service um, you can see here uh, like low uh, 40s. Uh, this is inland. This thing this is around Middleburg uh, for the event. But then kind of, but, but notice how long it takes this. You know, this is uh, through most of Wednesday and Thursday, where if we look at something like Ponte Vedra, they're showing the potential for wind gusts throughout Wednesday afternoon into most of Thursday with a much longer, steady kind of event. So that's something to take a look at as well. So again, I, I'm not comfortable just yet with, with really specific details, but I will say generally for Jacksonville, uh, if you're north or west, uh, kind of northwest of town, like if you're into Georgia or north of Jacksonville, you know, it starts tapering off pretty quick in terms of wind and rain. But I think like for the I-95 corridor of St. John's and uh, County and then all of Flagler and probably most of Putnam, you're looking at a higher wind and definitely higher rainfall event. And across the rest of northeast Florida, more like a high, middle to upper tropical storm event. And then south of that, it's pretty much hurricane force uh, conditions. So that's kind of what I got time for today in this video, guys. I'll leave you with one more thing. Evacuation zones are going to be critical for folks, especially across central Florida, where the most evacuations are going to take place. Um, Hillsboro, uh, I'm just going to show you Hillsboro County. This is how easy it is, guys. Go to Google, type in your county evacuation zones. Almost the first one, you're going to see a .gov Florida website. Click on, click on your website, and then most counties are going to look just like this. You're going to go to your county and find your evacuation zone, and if you're in it, you need to leave, okay? Uh, otherwise, for evacuations, I cannot answer every question. Um, I can give you guidelines. Um, I'll have it in a separate post today, so I'm not going to have time to go through it in the video because I'm going to get a lot of these questions about, oh, should I evacuate? Should I stay? Should I go? I can't make that decision, but I can kind of help you with it. So we'll have something later today for, for you guys on that. But uh, more to come. What I got for you now, uh, we will probably have another video tomorrow kind of refining this, and we'll probably talk through a little more uh, specific stuff tomorrow. We just probably need another day for this forecast to shake out. So that's so what I got for you guys today. As always, thanks for watching, and have a good one.